Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is the bacon wrapped barbecue pheasant sandwich. Well, recently the ATBBQ crew followed my dad and I on a hunt and cook day at beautiful Flint Oak in Fall River, Kansas. It was an incredible experience. If you haven't seen the video, go check it out. It's called The Hunt. It's short, it's sweet, it was really fun. Now the Flint Oak guys, they put us on the birds and we came home with pheasant, quail, and shucker. And since then, I've been working up some recipes to share with those of you who are requesting wild game. Now today we're gonna be smoking up some bacon wrapped pheasant. We're gonna be turning that into a pulled pheasant barbecue sandwich much like you would do with chicken, but with a few extra tips to really help you get the most out of your birds. Let's get started. Now we're cooking our pheasants today on the Yoder Smokers Loaded Wichita Offset Smoker. So the first thing we gotta do is get a fire going. So we're gonna load up a chimney of charcoal here, get this going in the firebox. All right, we'll wait till those coals are glowing. This is glowing hot now. We're gonna dump this out here in the back of our firebox. We're kind of gonna keep that pushed toward the back of the firebox. That way we can burn a small hot fire, just rolling over a log or two at a time and maintaining the temperature. We've got some oak splits as well as some cherry today. I'm gonna start with the oak on the fire since we're just looking to build some heat and not flavor yet. Now let's talk about these pheasant a little bit. Uh, what we're gonna be cooking today is bone-in pheasant breast. So that whole breast cavity all in one piece. Uh, I've saved the legs for another project that we're gonna be doing. And one of the things that I wanted to make sure we got done to these breasts is to get a brine on them because that's really one of the things that's gonna help you have a nice, juicy, flavorful uh, breast meat in the end. So these have been soaking in a brine overnight. Super simple, all we did was put five quarts of water in with a pound of our Cattleman's Grill Butcher House brine and let them soak for about 16 hours. All right, so these have been locked in here in the brine since last night. That's what we're working with. So we've still got that breastbone intact and that's gonna help uh, really save some of the moisture as we're smoking these. The other thing we're gonna do, you'll see just, he just here in a minute is wrap some bacon around them as well. Now this uh, brine obviously is a salty solution and this is a fairly small piece of meat. So I'm gonna make sure that we rinse the outsides off so we don't get too much salt on the surface. So we got these rinsed off. Immediately notice we got just a little bit of shot right under the surface there. So, you know, you're always keeping an eye out for those. If these guys are sitting nice and flat. I've just done a little trimming to make that happen. It's pretty easy. Just come back here on the backside and cut this bone out. Just a good pair of shears and cut right through that bone. And there's one of those on each side. All right, so that should sit nicely now. Now what we're gonna do next is get these things seasoned up and wrapped in bacon. Now for the seasoning, we're going with just one of our favorite barbecue rubs, Plowboy's Yardbird. This gets used on poultry, it gets used on pork. Just a great all around barbecue rub. A little sugar, a little salt, some paprika, and then some depth flavors. We're not going too heavy here. We are gonna add bacon, so we don't wanna over salt these. Now for the bacon, you just wanna use like a classic cut bacon. You don't want any thick bacon because it'll take forever for it to render out. And I'm just gonna lay this out. You wanna get enough coverage to cover the entire top of the breast. Usually about four wide pieces, maybe five if they're a little bit thinner. Four is gonna work in this case. So I'm just gonna pull this around and we're gonna tuck everything underneath. There we go. So this is kind of like, it's kind of insulating the way the skin would had we just plucked the bird and left the skin on. These have the skin off, but now we've got this fatty skin layer on the outside to keep this meat nice and moist while it's smoking. 
We're gonna be smoking pretty hot today, looking at about 300 to 325 range. And we're gonna put these birds right down there by the firebox. And we're doing that because we wanna be able to render out the fat in this bacon so it has a nice texture. It's just hard to get anything other than chewy bacon uh, unless you take the temperature a little bit higher. A little sizzle already, that's a good thing. We get in here and roll another log over to keep our temp up. Throw one more in there. And we'll put a little more cherry right here in the front just to preheat so that that's gonna ignite instantly just like that one did right back there when we're ready to roll it over. While the pheasant's smoking, we're gonna mix up an apple pecan slaw to go on our barbecue sandwich. So we're starting with three cups of green cabbage, just shredded up. Next, we're going to dice up a Granny Smith apple. So we just wanna go for roughly, you know, the same size pieces, half inch or whatever that might be. Nice little bite sized pieces. Now, instead of just dicing up the green parts and throwing these in fresh, uh, we're gonna put a little bit of char on them as well as soften up the thicker end down here just by throwing these right on the coals in the firebox. So I'm just gonna break up some of these coals and then we'll just throw these right on top. So just kind of turn these around. You see they start to get some char, especially on the green ends. And then the white ends are gonna soften up enough that we can throw them right into that slaw. And then we've got this nice char, smoky flavor going on as well. All right, we're gonna pick these out of here now. So we can cut the root end off and then we're just gonna mince these up. So that white end will have a nice little bit of sweetness to it, as well as like the aromatic that you're used to out of a green onion. Next, we're gonna add a little sweet and crunchy element in the form of these praline candied pecans. We're looking to get about a third of a cup. Now to dress this, we're gonna start with a tablespoon of mayo. We're gonna add to that three tablespoons of our Coslix Carolina mustard sauce. Just give that a little mix and pour it over the slaw. So now we've got like this sweet and tangy thing going on, which is gonna go great with our barbecue pheasant. Just gonna work that into the slaw so everything gets coated. This is actually great if you wanna do it the night before and let it sit, the flavors will be even better, but you're fine to just let it rest for half an hour or so. So, into the fridge. Well, our pheasants are temping around 145 now, and we're shooting for about 155 to 160 on the internal finishing temperature. So what we're gonna do now is mix up just a little bit of sauce and then paint that right over the top so it can tack up by the time these birds are done. So we're gonna start with some Firebug Mild Grilling Sauce. This is a great tomato-based fruity sauce. And we're gonna add to that some of the Blues Hog Raspberry Chipotle barbecue sauce, but this stuff's almost more like a jam, just a little bit different texture. And we're gonna do about one part of the Blues Hog to three parts of the Firebug. Whisk that up and just let them warm slightly here on top of the firebox. So these are looking beautiful. Great browning on the bacon. Lots of juiciness on there too. We're just gonna hit them with a little bit of this sauce. It's good to warm it just slightly so you're not putting cold sauce on a hot bird. We don't need a lot. We just kinda wanna get a little glaze on there. You can always add more to your sandwich later. Just enough to kinda tack up on the surface. We'll go ahead and roll over one last log while we're at it. It 
So we're gonna go ahead and pull this front one off and just come up past 155 on its way to 160. Same with this guy right here. We're just waiting a couple more minutes on this last one. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our bacon off of our pheasant breasts. We are grateful to our bacon for having kept everything nice and juicy. We're not gonna say goodbye to this bacon yet. We're gonna chop it up and add it to the sandwich. But before we build our sandwiches, we need to just go ahead and fillet the breasts off of the bone and pull the meat. So this is real simple. You just slice right down along the breast bone and then you're just gonna follow the contour so that you're taking off all of the meat, the breast, the tender, all that. And there you have your pheasant breast. So this is super tender right now and we can just pull this apart by hand. Look at that, nice and juicy still. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through, we're gonna fillet all the breasts. We're just gonna shred the meat up by hand. All right, we got our pheasant all shredded up. Now we're gonna dice up our bacon that we can mix right in with that pheasant to go on the sandwich. Let's just put it all together. We've got some toasted brioche buns here. We're gonna come in with our pheasant and our bacon. We give that just a drizzle of that sauce that we used earlier. Starting right up front here. Just a little bit more of that. And then we're gonna to top it off with that apple slaw. Got a lot going on here, but should be a good balance of flavors between the tanginess of the mustard dressing and the sweetness of the barbecue sauce and the smokiness of the pheasant and the bacon. Beautiful. Mm. It's got a bite of apple right in that first bite. Man, that goes so well with smoked meat. Apple and smoked meat, I love it. The barbecue sauce is great. The pheasant's tender and it's smoky. And you gotta love a little bacon, right? This is a really solid barbecue sandwich and something you could do with chicken as well. We just happen to have pheasant that's been in the freezer. So great utilization for that as well. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.